Hello everybody, I'm Teko Selgin and welcome to a Company of Heroes 2 replay. Today we have Nixa as the Osthair versus uh, Laser Cat goes Pew Pew as the Russians and we're on Pripyat, the only other 1v1 map aside from Kolodny Ferma. Pripyat is a shitty map. It's um, got two choke points in the middle. This bridge can be blown up, reducing it to one choke point. And if that wasn't bad enough, down here, a stupid river that takes like 20 minutes to go over and up here, a stupid river that takes like 20 minutes to go over. And over here, a stupid river that takes like 10 minutes to go over. It's just a dumb map. Um, Kaladni Farm is not fantastic, but it does the best it can with Company Heroes 2. Uh, but not for whatever this one, Pripyat. So, dang it. Screenshot. Okay. Um, so we have, right off the bat, the German builds Tier 1, or Tier 0, I suppose it is, because you have to tech up to Tier 1, and then goes for the... Grenadiers, fairly typical opening, um, fairly odd opening from the Soviets building his tier one first. This will get you snipers, it will get you scout cars, and it will get you whatever um, infantry you unlock with your doctrine. If you don't unlock um, infantry, it'll just get you penal battalions. And so I have seen people, um, well no, I haven't seen people, because no one's posting any fucking replays at coh2.org. Please go post your 1v1s there. I need some stuff to shoutcast. There's nothing. I'm going stir crazy. Ooh, come on. I need some stuff to watch. Company of Heroes 2 has just started and it's like stillborn. Nobody's playing this thing. And whenever I play, I can only get matched against people who don't know how to play this video game. And it's like, come on. Okay, but um, weirdly, uh, the first thing the Soviets build is a conscript squad. And you don't need tier 1 for a conscript squad. You get those at tier 0. So um, I'm having difficulty understanding why the Special Rifle Command went up when it did. Um, now it looks like it's still not building anything. We'll swap over to laser get because now it's finally build, building something. Okay, so he's rushing a scout car. Um, then it does make sense that he has to build the uh, special ref command before his uh, engineers leave the base and start capturing stuff. So that makes some sense, I suppose. We'll have to see what he uses the rushed scout car for. Usually what people do is they'll get the half track out and um, the scout car being a half-track, of course, because that's how the Russians roll in more ways than one. They roll literally, and they also roll figuratively. So uh, this thing is a half-track, and it's a scout car. And it's got a machine gun on the front and a machine gun on the back. And most importantly, it's got whoever you want in the middle. And when you put some people with flamethrowers in the middle, you drive around and roast people. And this isn't quite as good as it was in the Alpha when it was ridiculously overpowered but um, it's still pretty sweet. So we have our first engagement going on in the middle of the map um, on the Soviet side of this thing. If the Wehrmacht can capture this point, uh, sorry, if the Oster can capture this point, it's gonna be annoying for the Soviets, uh, especially because this is a munitions point, so you wanna get a hold of that fairly soon if you're gonna get flamers and then stick them in the um, scout car. It looks like he's going for Penal Battalion. The Penal Battalion's good because they can upgrade dual flamers, so you stick the dual flamers in the scout car. It's like double OP, all right, that's fantastic. Uh, these two will meet soon. We'll see how that fight plays out. Typically, I find that um, I can beat uh, Pioneer squads with my engineers um, as long as you keep your distance, which is what you want to do. I, I usually have no trouble, although it's possible I'm just getting... Well, since... Okay, it's not possible. Since I'm definitely getting matched up against people who don't know how, how to play, uh, potentially people who do know how to play would be able to sometimes beat my engineers with uh, their pioneers. So we'll have to see how that plays out as Company of Heroes becomes... Company of Heroes 2 becomes a more mature game and people figure out what they're doing and stuff like that. This scout car hanging out here just to make sure the Soviets can cap uh, this fuel. The Soviets have now secured both fuels on the map, the one in the north and in the south. Wehrmacht making, I think, a mistake uh, pushing so hard on the middle. He's got a sniper here, uh, which we'll talk about in a sec. I, th I guess the Wehrmacht's just Ostherr. So I must train myself to say Ostherr. It is no longer the Wehrmacht. It is the Ostherr. And I said in one of my previous shotcasts that I think Relic made up that word. Someone said no, Oster is the word they use to talk about troops fighting on the Eastern Front. I suppose that's right, but is it the word that you, they use to refer to the organization that was in charge of the troops? Or is it just a, a word to describe like people on it? Whatever. Um, so it looks like the Oster has focused on setting up uh, in the middle and he's going to use his machine gun to um, lock it down. You see it's working out pretty well for him because the Russians are doing a fairly stupid thing and just charging straight into all this shit and he's getting chewed up so that's not happening. Uh, very, very bad move and if you, you lose this penal squad that'd be horrific but um, oof, down to one man, that's really unfortunate. They cost uh, money to reinforce. What's it cost? 60? Can't be that expensive. Maybe it's 60. 
to reinforce a penal squad. Uh, I'll click on it and nothing's happening. So, um, yeah, the, the austere is able to lock down the middle, so I guess that's nice, but you don't really get a ton for locking down the middle, right? You can secure this munitions if you're very uh, aggressive, and you can keep a hold on your munitions. Um, mostly what you get is the VP, but, you know, VP is not really as important as getting the fuel and the VP up here, or the fuel and the VP down here, and the austere has given up both. So can I click on this penal battalion now and find out how it costs to reinforce? 30 to reinforce. Okay, what does a conscript cost? 20. Okay. Um, so there you go. Uh, more expensive for the penal battalion. Uh, so that was a bad, bad attack by the Soviets in the middle, made worse by the fact that the sniper picked three people off. Typically, um, so I shouldn't talk because I don't really build snipers, but if you want my advice as someone who likely sucks at the game because everybody's new, um, try not to build the uh, German sniper, <laughs> um, especially if you see a penal battalion and or a scout car out from the Soviet because then they, that means they can build their own sniper. Uh, German sniper has issues because snipers are no longer like they are in Company of Heroes 1. They cannot just cloak and walk around, they can only cloak and cover. And um, the Soviet squads are just huge. The smallest Soviet squad is four people. Also snipers suck against buildings now. Notice this guy's taking like four shots and he hasn't killed anybody. And notice again that buildings make you basically invincible. Um, this little hut is making them invincible, not just to snipers, but to two grenadier squads and a pioneer squad. Finally gets a kill. Uh, with this sniper, so that's good, but um, Soviet trying to figure out if he wants to bring in his scout car to shoot the sniper or not. So he could repair his scout car if it took any damage, but I have a feeling two grenadier squads plus a sniper plus pioneers could take him out, especially because the grenadiers, if we switch over to Nixa, you click on them, you notice they can fire a Panzerfaust for 25 munitions, and two of those basically will put these out of business. Oof, engine destroyed, runs over mine, so good job by the Oster placing some mines on uh, this stuff that he's captured, and I guess that killed the gunner? Yeah, uh, gunner in the front. No, it didn't kill the gunner. He's just, he's crying. Look at him, that's sad. And then um, the machine gun repositioned and shot it and it blew up. So look, that's pretty. Um, I like that. So we have a commander unlocked for the Germans and a commander unlocked for the Soviets, but they have yet to choose uh, the thing. And good job repositioning, again, the machine gun to pin these people. Um, really have to say, not super impressed with uh, Soviet play so far. He hasn't. Aside from capturing the fuel at the top and the bottom, which was almost entirely due to the fact that the German failed to try and take the top or the bottom and went straight for the middle, um, the Soviet has been able to do nothing. So as soon as the German has turned his attention to either of these things, his or her attention to either of these things, the Soviets just melted completely um, under the pain of making these horrific frontal assaults, but somehow pushed off that machine gun, just running up and shooting it uh, from behind, I guess? I should have paid more attention to that fight, but um, just managed to put in enough damage on the machine gun to force it to back off, so this is going to be annoying for the Oss here. Um, probably going to lose the sniper if he doesn't retreat soon. Did get a pick off on the penal battalion, so that's good. But um, So notice they, they cloak in cover, and then they can keep the cloak for a little while as they move away from cover, and so if you're in cover, you can move cloaked like all the way up. What is the sniper doing? Jesus Christ, you can't do that. You're, you're dead now. Look at you. You... You're dead. Um, so that was a bad move by the Oster, and r I don't know if it's worth capping this fuel point before going up again, this strategic point. But um, the only reason to cap this fuel point when it's decap or cut off from you before capping this uh, strategic point or standard territory point, world standard territory point, the only reason to do this is to make it harder for your opponent to cap it eventually. Um, so I don't know, I feel like since you're going to want both of these eventually with these pioneers, it makes more sense to cap this thing first and start getting the income, because remember you've got three fuel and five munition income per minute uh, just for capturing these normal points. So uh, kind of a weird setup on the uh, map right now. Let's take a look at this fight in the middle. The Germans are pushing in again. We have some Panzer Grenadiers good at close range, but not if they get set on fire, which is exactly what the Penal Battalion is good at. So it looks like they're going to be able to close in on the Penal Battalion and inflict some real damage, and now the Penal Battalion's out of there. Please don't die. Well, I don't care if you die. Oh, wow. Uh, so we have a um, half-track upgraded with the uh, quad thing. I heard this was not so great, but we're going to get to see it in action. Um, I'm going to open up. Ooh, it's going to take some Panzer Shrek fire, too. So is this going to be strong enough to... Nope, just kidding. Got it back out. Um, does take out a machine gun fairly fast, so... Um, Looks like it does put out some good damage on infantry, so that's a good thing to know. These things are fragile as heck, like most vehicles in Company Heroes 2. Uh, they're very fragile, but um, they do put out okay damage on it. Yeah, I don't know if it's worth it. It looks like they suppressed, but uh, not amazingly. So, yeah, so that was some good AT usage.
by the Germans there. Good read on his opponent, seeing that he's only got like light vehicles so far. We're gonna get. Um, so that's the M5 half track, by the way. That's not the scout car you build from uh, tier one. It's the thing you get from tier three, and um, that's what you get to upgrade into the thing. And these pioneers doing a good job down here capping stuff. I had some pioneers up here, but they got pushed off. They did a good job capping stuff, and. Um, Germans are going, going just a pretty basic uh, infantry heavy, heavy tier one for the um, heavy tier zero for the machine gun and the grenadier up to a tier two panzer grenadier um, strategy. So nothing surprising here. If you see your opponent transitioning into tanks with this strategy, then you want to start getting out your pack 40s and your pack 40s in conjunction with your panzer shreks are going to be your AT. That's probably not going to do you for. Um, I think you're going to need more AT than that typically against your typical Soviet uh, T-34 spammer, but um, it's enough to get you started. And um, I don't know, maybe enough to hold out until you take up to something nicer. But uh, we do have a bunker medic station completed in the German base. You're going to have to build these if you ever want to heal up. You can build these anywhere you want, but uh, it's always, of course, convenient to have them built at your base because they're safe there. So here we see the units taking up 20 minutes to move across this river slowly and surely. They uh, Sometimes they move quickly for no reason and they move slowly again. I don't know what that's about. Uh, here's a fight. Um, the big downside to these Panzer Shreks is that they cost 120 munitions to get two of these, and then your infantry power, uh, infantry killing power goes way down, so uh, now the Soviets are going to be able to push up at least until they hit this machine gun. So, um, gotta say I'm not really feeling the Soviet strategy here. He's got a T-70 sitting in the base doing jack shit, and um, just seems to be a real big fan of running straight at the Austria forces in the middle, getting suppressed by a machine gun. And, um, yeah, that doesn't, it, well, no, it's not, not good, not so great. Uh, here comes the T-70, so, um, you know, you can watch how effective or ineffective it is against infantry. Uh, here's a hint, not super effective. It's also not very effective against tanks. Um, it's probably good against light vehicles, but, let's be honest, everything is good against light vehicles in this video game. So, um, I'm not a fan of the T-70, you may have heard me said that before in a previous shoutcast with Seb, and uh, I have not changed my mind. We're up to two stars on this penal battalion because they're getting roasted, and being roasted puts hair on your chest. This is dangerous. They're getting to low health, and when you get low health, probably what happens is... Oh, there's a satchel charge by the way, demolition. It's a satchel. It's a satchel, I think. Whatever it's called, the penal battalion gets to throw those things. Big boom, the big timer, too. So um, if this game works like Company of Heroes 1... Oh, look, we have a Soviet sniper team. Um, Q, Q, Q. Yeah, see? They can't just cloak. Um, if this game works like Company Heroes 1, when your infantry start get to getting to low health, so like, for instance, these Panzer Grenadiers are super low health right now. Their health bar is a tiny sliver, but there's two men in the squad. So, you know, each of those men are really, really low. T-70 finally gets a kill. Hooray, that's the first kill for the T-70. And, of course, misses the rest of the shots. Um, so, if your health bars, or if your health... health is really low on who's getting shot if your health is really low on infantry in company heroes one they're very vulnerable to critical hits from uh flamers and that's really bad because a critical hit from a flamer will kill people so if you have like a really low health squad and then a flamer opens up on them chances are you'll lose the whole thing in one burst and that's bad because you won't have time to retreat so i'm guessing company heroes 2 probably works the same way that doesn't seem like something they changed but on the other hand they did change oof loses this flamer squad both of them uh, down in fire, so that was uh, really bad, especially because they could have been repairing this T-70 in a moment, so that's really, really, really bad uh, for the... Oh, does he not lose the Flammer Squad, or was that a second engineer squad? Or was that a penal battalion? That couldn't have been a penal battalion. I think he's just got the one. Um, and it's a satchel charge, yes, that's what it's called. So, um, did force them off in the middle with the use of the... Hey, it's a woman sniper. Hello. See? Ladies. Um, so did force them off with the use of the sniper, but it looks like snipers got one kill, conscripts got one kill, these guys have three kills, these guys have zero kills, so really it was just accumulating damage on the Germans, and they uh, gave up and moved back so good, uh, conceding the territory from the Aussie there. Um, I'm, I'm just very confused about the teching choices for both players. Austria, I suppose, has maybe not had enough fuel to tech up to anything, aside from getting those fuel really well in the early game and using that to tech up to tier 1 and tier 2 and oh I guess actually no look we're at uh, tier 4 now for the Germans so and we're at float 40 fuel okay so the Germans just going sort of straight into late game after stopping off with a lot of heavy infantry um, 
I was about to say more confused about the Soviets not getting any tanks, but here we go. We have a T-34. So I think the T-70 was unnecessary. Um, if we look at the fuel costs for these two units, um, you see the T-34 costs 75 and the T-70 costs 55. So just for um, another 25 fuel, you can get yourself a T-34, which is a uh, much better investment. It's going to hold up much better and it's going to be able to squish people. We have a Molotov cocktail going in uselessly. Um, so at least there's a lot of fire. The burning trees in this video game I think are extremely pretty. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'd say they're like a 9 at least. These snipers are getting destroyed. Um, one left in the squad and pan <laughs> two Panzer Shreks missed. This T-34 either needs to be reversing or squishing people. Never just stand in front of Panzer Shreks. You neither need to make them do the Panzer dance or the Shrek dance or whatever dance. You make them do the dance so we have a stolen Panzer Shrek in battalion. That's bad news. This is going to be a badass squad. Um, you either make them do the dance or... Hmm. Looks like we have a Doctrine chosen by Laser Cat goes pew pew, but it's bugged because it's not showing up. Can I switch to Nixa? Nixa works. There's a cap pew pew with buggy. Okay, um, if your tank is like, you got Panzer Shreks here and your tank right here, your tank either needs to be driving into these people and squishing them or backing away so they can't get shot. Otherwise this happens, right? Look at that low health bar. Um, so drive towards or away from the Panzer Shrek, drive towards to force the dance, drive away to stay alive, but don't do nothing because that's bad news. Um, Oh, Penal Battalion recruiting a machine gun. That's slightly dangerous because if this guy died, he'd lose the flamethrower and the panther strike. But um, now it's looking pretty sweet for the Soviets. Um, tier 4 is going to have to do a lot of work for the Germans if he wants to come back from this. Um, let's see, what doctrine do we have chosen? Half track, half track, regal, anti tank mine. So, not going to see that used because he has to build a half track. Recon overflight, that's pretty sweet, but he doesn't have any munitions. Spotting scope on vehicles, that would be fantastic if there were any vehicles. Elephant tank destroyer, uh, might be overkill for now, and a Stuka, Stuka dive bomb, which is pretty cool. So, um, we have two snipers out now from the Soviets. Um, these are ladies, and these are ladies, so we got a lot of ladies. Oh, no, wait, these are dudes. Um, we got equal representation around the snipers. Look at the poor T-70, he has to run away from these people, otherwise he's gonna get fausted. Um, so, uh, lesson here, don't buy a T-70. It's been on the map like 10 minutes and it's got three kills, and that's not helpful at all. Um, don't buy them. Uh, they're like bad M8s. No armored skirt and no machine gun in the M8. Uh, oh, up to five kills. Okay, better. Um, oof, look at how much, Jesus Christ, 700 manpower and 90 fuel being floated for the Soviets. Down to, well, down to 600, then back up to 700. I don't know what the Soviets spending his money on. Um, so, unfortunately, Company of Heroes 2 has a horrific upkeep system. The way it works, if you have 0 to 25 pop cap here, um, you don't have any upkeep. From 25 to, I think, 75 pop cap, or 25 to 50 pop cap, um, each extra population thing above 25 starts costing you um, a fair amount of upkeep. So from 25 to 32, you go down from 300 manpower to 272 manpower, so that's like 30 manpower lost for 7 um, population, so 7, 14, 21, so like, I don't know, for each population you lose like 4 manpower, I don't know. But then once you get over 50 or whatever, it gets even worse. So the incentive is t to stay as close to 25 as you can the entire match, because th you're never going to get more manpower by anything. Look at this tree still burning. You're never going to get more manpower from anything. Uh, you're only ever going to get less from good unit preservation, and upkeep's just going to hurt you. So that's pretty stupid, and so... I've, I've found my, it's possible that I'm just playing against horrible players, right? But I found myself like banking resources and floating resources. The Soviets floating 900 uh, manpower and 121 fuel, which would typically be unforgivable in any decent RTS. But um, it, I'm finding it more effective in Company Heroes 2 than you would think, because if you use this to buy anything, uh, you're just gonna hit the you're, you're gonna cripple your manpower income and then it's gonna be harder to reinforce And it's gonna be a vicious cycle because if you can't reinforce quickly enough your opponent's just gonna push you off the map Then you're gonna have to spend um, This stuff even more and it just gets ugly and so I don't know save it for a rainy day Or what you want to do is maybe build all your tech buildings right use that extra stuff to tech up get some molotovs Get some AT grenades spend anything spend it on anything that needs fuel other than units and frankly There's not a lot of that um of course, always make sure you have enough manpower to reinforce, but, um, you know, aside from that, I'm really thinking that floating resources might be um, a sensible thing to do every once in a while. And so, actually, this is not the Soviet floating resources, this is the German floating resources, so uh, maybe saving for a panther. 
or something. Um, soon they'll have the fuel for it. Um, I got rushed by broom bars in one of the earlier patches, and that actually worked fairly well. I won the game, but um, it was they were they were just blowing up a bunch of stuff. Um, we have a sniper bot by the Germans. That's a very ballsy choice when your opponent has two snipers on the field, you have, and that's four snipers, right? Because two sniper squads. So I don't know. I said ballsy. I, I'm gonna go with stupid. Um, there's no way one German sniper is gonna be able to take out four Soviet snipers. Apparently, when the German sniper levels up uh, to vet one, you can fire an incendiary round. It will stun nearby squad mates, which doesn't make any fucking sense. But um, so that'll stun the Soviet sniper if you hit them with it. It'll kill the first sniper and stun the other one, and then you'll get a second shot against the Soviets. And that's a way to take out the Soviet. Uh, sniper team. Uh, si you have to get vet one for that though, and it's cost you 45 munitions, so it's like, come on. And aside from that, uh, your German sniper is going to be very ineffective against the Soviets, because you're going to shoot the Soviets, they're going to lose one person, they're going to shoot you, you're going to lose one person. And that's the end of that fight. Um, if you even get the first shot off. If you don't get the first shot off, it's like, why even bother showing up? So, um, floating a shit ton of fuel, but buying a panther with it right now, fueling manpower. Let's look at the Soviets. Soviets also floating quite a bit of manpower and fuel, and so we still don't see a doctrine chosen, or we've chosen guard mortar coordination tactics. So that'll get you guard's rifle, um, T-3485, um, what other stuff? Nope. I was just hovering. I don't know. I guess I guess he hasn't chosen one yet. Or it's bugged. Buggy, 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 but it's beta. So now we have the T-34s rushing in. This is, or the T-34 rushing in. This is fantastic timing because the Germans have bought a Panther. So this could be the turning point in this match. If the Panther manages to take out uh, the T-34 and um, the T-34. So we have two. Ram it, ram it, ram it. You're going to die in the next shot. You're going to die in the second the next shot. doesn't matter that you may get destroyed. Ram the enemy tank. Ram the Panther. Just click the ram button in the bottom left corner. And do it, do it, do it, do it. Don't fuck you. Jesus Christ, people, ram your T-34s into the enemy tank if you're about to lose your T-34, okay? It's the sweetest thing in the entire world. It is sick nasty, all right? Look at this T-34. Hey, dude, dude, I'm gonna ram you, bunk. Let's be friends. And now the T-70 comes in to clean up, except, no, it's not gonna fucking work because it's a T-70. Um, hey, look at me, I'm gonna kill a panther. No, you're not. These things are just gonna suppress all your infantry. What are you even doing? Uh, they're actually not suppressing infantry. This is surprising. Uh... Stolen Panther Strike doing some serious damage. Um, now they're finally suppressing the infantry. So bad, bad Soviets. Bad, god damn it. Had this T-34 rammed the Panther, the Panther would have been immobilized up here, basically. Um, then maybe the other T-34 could have done some damage. Anyways, uh, don't run straight into the enemy. Whoa, he killed this. Oh no, he didn't kill this. There's the machine gun bunker. He's behind a tree. Hur, I'm an idiot. Okay, so don't st- What do you- What do you even- Hmm, this is very confusing. So- um, T-70 is dead. I guess these people are getting unsuppressed somehow, because these machine gun bunkers are just pieces of shit. This is really good information to know. Um, meanwhile, sniper. This is really good information to know. Base machine gun bunkers are basically shit. There's two of them firing at these people, and they seem to periodically be getting unsuppressed. I don't know what's going on. So, it actually is not working at all for the Soviets, right? They just lost their T-34. Um, they never killed the bunker or anything. But just, uh, FYI. Uh, base bunkers are shit, and think about trying a base rush somehow. If you have some Panzer Shrek's or um, you can close enough. So there's some units in the game that can pop smoke. So for instance, this mortar uh, can drop a smoke barrage, and uh, the Stug can drop a smoke barrage in front of it. Um, I believe Soviet mortar drops a smoke, smoke, smoke barrage. Um, other stuff like that. Smoke is really stupendous in Company Heroes 2. It blocks sight completely, and um, if the sight, well, that's the thing. I think if the site, if you get, if, so let's say you block site with smoke right here, and so this can't see stuff over here. I think if you have another unit over here that can spot for them, you can shoot through the smoke. I'm fairly certain. Um, but whether or not that's the case, uh, you can probably use some smoke for some sweet base rushes, considering these bunkers are horrible. So uh, try that stuff out. Send me your replays of base rushing some poor fool, because you either whether you're using smoke or not, maybe you're just running in with Panther Shreks or Flamers or something. Um, this tree, um, I'm thinking, is divinely inspired. It's like the burning bush or something. It's speaking to me. It's telling me this game is two players. We don't really know what they're doing. That might have just been a bad move on the Soviet part, um, thinking he had the game won right when the Panther showed up. But, um, you know, we've all made that mistake um, if we're bad at the game. And so now the Panther crushes one sniper, and the other guy's like, oh, yeah, I'm out. Um, should maybe have retreated earlier. I don't know. 
see this other barrage coming. We have an incendiary barrage going in on the middle. It's just going to keep the VP clear of Germans for a little while. Not going to do much for the Soviets because uh, the VPs are tied now, so they're going to neither tick down. Don't know why the Germans committing so much down here. Um, if he had more infantry heading to the north already, I could condone this sort of thing. It's always good to be pushing your opponent on all parts of the map, but uh, instead he's bought two uh, mortar teams for reasons completely unknown, and thus has deprived himself of capping power in the north of the map. And look at the German, oh god, 119 manpower per minute, because he's at 70 supply. Oh man, it's so painful. You're not making any money, and there's no way to make that higher. You can't capture points or anything. It's just always 300 minus your upkeep. So that sucks. Oof. Germany needs to go lose some units. Take these mortars and give them an honorable death or something. Uh, this flamethrower really needs to be picked up too. That's a cool thing that wasn't in Company Heroes. You can pick up flamethrowers now. They don't just disappear when they fall to the ground. Hey, these guys could pick up a flamethrower. Pioneers know how to work them. Uh, what's this? A, s a flare shot by the uh, sniper. So that's going to reveal, I think, in the fog of war for the Soviets. And that's going to let them drop these incendiary things. Again, does nothing except keep them off the VP. Panther's not even getting hurt. Um, but you wouldn't know that from looking at the Panther because it briefly had the little under attack icon. If you ever see this little flashing icon, uh, this orange crosshair thing, uh, it means your units are in combat. See, that's a good tip. I gave you a tip, so now you're better at company heroes too. Um, so please, now that you're good at the game, send me some replays because nobody's posting one of ones. Um, Who's gonna win? Who's gonna win this battle? I'm gonna call it for... I don't know, it's tough to know now. Or are we gonna have a sniper battle? Soviet sniper's down here. German sniper up here. German sniper's cloaked. Soviet sniper's gonna have to continually run. Actually, they can cloak, right? So, I don't know. We'll find out. Massive Soviet infantry push down here. Oof, German's down to 99 manpower income. What did he build? A Niederwerfer? A Panzerwerfer. Panzerwerfer is, um a hot dog delivery system, hastily refitted to be able to fire rockets when the war started. Um, after the war, they were turned again back into hot dog delivery systems. But, of course, the Germans call them Wiener Schnitzels, so... Um, see, I know all sorts of World War II history. And so I was like, Tycho, you don't know shit. And I'm like, no, I totally know shit. And they're like, yeah, but you mean shit as in not knowing shit. And I was like, okay. Um, these two mortars are cool. Something is bombing something. That's the Stuka down here. Yeah, so the Stuka dive bomb, uh, there's no smoke. That's different from most call-ins. Most call-ins, you like, click on the thing, and then some smoke will drop, and then the thing will drop. The Stuka dive bomb, all that you get is a... Like the V2 rocket in um, the original Company Heroes. So now we got a lot of burning trees. Um, but the... Of the Stuka is pretty loud, so uh, hopefully you'll be able to move out of the way if you know where it's coming. And obviously the Soviets just had one blob of infantry, so they were able to get out of there real fast. Um, so as we get later and later into the game, this is typically when the Germans start to do better, um, unless the Soviets just get a critical mass of T-34s, in which case the German late-game tanks don't mean anything, because they just come out and there's always more T-34s than there are German late-game tanks, and all it takes is one T-34 to disable a tank. Um, so the ratio just doesn't work out for the Germans. But uh, the... Soviets just investing really, really heavily in infantry, and uh, we'll see how that pays out. This Panther really hasn't done anything except crush a dude and kill a T-34, but it is giving the Soviets a headache, I think? I don't know. It's tough to tell. They haven't really been mounting any of really offensives. I don't know. It's I'm having trouble understanding what these players are doing and why they're choosing to move their people where they're choosing to move them. This Grenadier... There's no reason for them to be waiting there. They should pr probably be heading down here. This penal battalion, I don't even know. If only he knew there was a Panzerwerfer up here, he could have it over there and try and take it out with the Panzer Shrek. I don't know why he bought a Panzerwerfer. He's already got two mortars, which should be enough indirect fire for anybody in the entire world. Um, he's probably... I feel like he's set for AT now against um, T-34s forever. He's got a shit ton of Panzer Shreks. And look, we have an IS-2. Okay, this is Men of War syndrome right here. In Men of War, people who are bad at the game um, often are just like, let me buy the biggest tank I can. And that's a very bad idea. What's going on? We got a Stuka dive bomb somewhere? Where's the Stuka dive bomb coming in? Up here? Up here? Did I call it? Mm, yeah, I called it. And then I looked away at the last moment because I thought I was wrong. But I don't think that killed anybody. Maybe a guy in the building. Um, 
So in Men of War, people are like, ooh, sniper gets sniped. What did you expect against the Soviets? What's going to happen if you build a German sniper? It's going to get sniped. Do not build German snipers against the Soviets unless you have a really good reason. Um, I don't... Relic, why... Why would you give the one-person sniper team, which is always going to lose against the two-sniper team, to the side that most needs a more resilient sniper team, namely the Germans, because they have to take out the Soviets with the larger six-man crews on all their weapons? This doesn't make any... Well, okay, I know why Relic did this, right? Relic watched Enemy at the Gates. They figured that's how World War II happened. And so now they decided Soviets are going to be the, the side that spams infantry and or just has really big squads and everything. And they're like, of course, Soviets just had a lot of people on the thing. That's how the Soviet army worked, right? They just put a lot of people in their squads. Um, and so that's Relic's... That, I'm, I'm fairly certain this is how Relic makes their choices. They watch Enemy at the Gates and decide how to turn it into a video game. But um, that's okay, Call of Duty did it too, so hoo-ho! Um, Call of Duty did it twice. Or three times. Maybe just twice. I can't remember. Maybe it was three times. Call of Duty, Call of Duty 2, and World of War. Um, so... Relic, what was I talking about before the sniper teams? What was I talking about before the sniper teams? I'll remember. No, I won't. Oh yeah, the heavy war, uh, the heavy tank men of war syndrome. So in men of war, people are like, I'm gonna buy the heaviest tank I can. I'm losing, so I'm gonna buy an IS-2, or I'm losing, I'm gonna buy a Panther, or a Tiger, or something. And in men of war, that's a really bad idea, because any unit can pretty much take out a tank if you get a lucky hit on the back with an explosive, if you creep up through the bushes with an AT grenade or something and kill it. Um, like in real life, a bazooka, one, one bazooka shot will penetrate or something. So in Company Heroes 2, it's not quite that bad, right? Tanks have health bars, so you have to take this health bar down if you want to kill it, unless it's on ice and you break the thin ice under it. That'll kill it in one hit. But other than that, tanks have health bars, so it's not like you're going to lose it in one shot. Um, but tanks, the health bars are much lower than they are in the original Company of Heroes. There's nothing even approaching like the King Tiger in resiliency, not even like the Elephant. Uh, gets close to the King Tiger in terms of resiliency in Company of Heroes. Like in Company of Heroes, a King Tiger shows up and you're gonna have to wage like a campaign to kill that thing. First you're gonna have to like get some AT gun hits on the side, maybe a sticky bomb to cripple it, and then get more AT gun hits on the side to do some damage, some recoilless rifles in there to penetrate and circle a Sherman around the back. It's gonna take like 10 minutes. Uh, not gonna happen in Company of Heroes 2. Some really good hits from the side of the back will pretty much destroy any tank. So um, number one, heavy tanks are not super resilient. They're not the be all end all. Um, Number two, you need a reason to buy the heavy tank. Um, here there's there's zero, literally zero reason to buy this IS-2 instead of two T-34s. Uh, he's up against a panther and a bunch of panzer shreks he knows as the anti-tank. And the best way to take out the panther is to kill it, okay. Um, the You want non-tank anti-tank versus a panther because the panther is good at killing tanks. But if you must use tanks to kill a panther, then use T-34s, right? Because the ram is just going to destroy uh, the panther's gun, and then the other T-34 can kill it. So T-34, bread and butter, uh, super cheap, super easy. Click the ram button, drive the other one behind the panther. It's an I win button. Any, Even an idiot can do it. So do that. Um, don't get an IS-2, because maybe if you kill the panther with the IS-2, whatever, but chances are the panther's going to kill the IS-2. It's just going to be a normal tank match. You're not going to have any ace in the hole or anything. Looks like you lost the squad there. So... Um, Versus a panther, if you must use tanks, get T-34s. Now we have a second panther, so again, that would be even better for T-34s because he could outnumber them and destroy them rather than getting flanked with his IS-2. So if you must kill tanks with anti-tank, um, panthers especially, get the T-34s. If you're up against infantry anti-tank, the panzer shreks, you, is it, do you want an IS-2, a heavy tank, or do you want a, panzer, a T-34? Obviously you want a T-34 because both tanks are really going to get shredded by the Panzer Shreks. Like I said, health bars are pretty low on Company Heroes 2. So they're both going to get shredded. Um, the T-34, though, has a chance to crush them and has a chance to retreat because it's fast. Uh, the IS-2, I don't know how this got 180. It probably just bombarded some shit over here and killed eight people. So that's a really impressive barrage that we just missed because we did the shit. Um, the IS-2 against infantry, actually, that's kind of a fast ride to take but the IS-2 is going to have more trouble squishing. Oh look, he's trying to ram. You're a panther, you can't ram. The IS-2, because of course only T-34 is in real life can ram tanks. Um, the IS-2 is going to have much more trouble squishing people, because it's much less agile. And it's going to have much more trouble running from the Panzer Shreks, because it's slower. So, um, all it's got is um, a machine gun on the top and more health bar in terms of fighting Panzer Shreks. But neither of those are going to give more survivability, I think, than the T-34. At least not to be worth the cost. So, um... Here we have the Russian realizing his heavy tank is not going to win him the game magically, and he's quitting. Um, again, the machine gun firing forever. So this match, um, gotta say, 
whatever. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, I, you know, we, we got some interesting tactical insights from it. You got to see really infantry heavy play by both sides. Um, took the Russians quite a while to get up to tanks. Took the Germans quite a while to get up to tanks. Uh, we got my thoughts on resource floating and sniper teams and all that. So uh, I think that was worth, uh, worth a watch. And I hope you'll join me next time when um, I slit open my wrists and cry for the times when we got to play Company Heroes 1 instead of this game.